Hello everybody, my name is Edwin. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. In these video series, I'm going to try and go over the basics of GitLab for a small to medium sized organization and provide a workflow that might help you get your foot in the door with GitLab. Before we get started, uh, if you like this kind of content, please remember to give it a like. Uh, if you want to see more of this kind of content, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you have any questions, yeah, just leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. So getting started, GitLab has a couple of things to help you navigate around their system. The top menu here, uh, it's a little hamburger menu, gives you um, your projects, gives you your groups, milestones, snippets, activity, environments, operations, and security. Um, we're going to go more in depth in this in future videos, so don't worry. I'm kind of going to speed run through all the UI elements so that you can kind of familiarize yourself with where things are. And when I bring them up in future videos, you can be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's where that is. So the top menu bar here. The main thing that you're going to kind of real, um, deal with here are probably projects and groups, milestones. You're going to also work with here. Uh, when you get into more advanced things, you're probably going to start working with snippets and operations and environments. So uh, just keep that in mind. You'll also, if you go a little bit to the right, you'll have this plus icon here. And this will allow you to make new projects or subgroups, epics, invite people uh, to your group or um, in a GitLab wide sort of thing, just do the groups and um, snippets and all that kind of stuff. You have some UI elements here that relate to your issues. You could go and take a look at what open issues are owned to you. Um, you can take a look at merge requests or you could take a look at uh, things on your to-do list. Things that are owned to you usually go into the to-do list. Then you're going to have uh, a UI element with your profile picture that correlates to things that you could do with your account. All pretty basic relative stuff for um, a web UI. Then you're going to have on the leftmost sidebar uh, things related to the actual GitLab project that you're in right now or the group. So my group is called eMundo. Uh, I have subgroup information. I could see uh, things like activity, um, things like project creation, push events, all the activity that's going on on this subgroup and any group that is created below this, any project that is done below this, I could uh, get a bird's eye view of everything in there. Labels, I haven't created any labels, but these are just tags that you could add to your issues, your projects, all that kind of stuff um, so that you could organize them better. Um, you can look at the members inside of your project and invite new members and give them a role with inside of your organization. And moving on from there, we have the epics. Epics are like collections of sprints or collections of work. So let's say I have a feature that I'm trying to move towards, but it's going to take me maybe a week or two to finish. Uh, I could put all the user stories and sprints inside of one epic, and then uh, I'll be able to track the work that way. Um, it's going to make a little bit more sense once I go over issues. I probably should have jumped over to issues and then done epics, but uh, we'll do it this way. You're going to get a Kanbana board for your epics. Um, not super important right now. Uh, we'll go over this in another video. And you also have a roadmap. This will be like a calendar view of your epics. Um, and if you have multiple epics, they'll be stacked on top of your calendar. Uh, you'll also, we'll go over this in a future video, so don't worry about that. I know I'm saying that a lot, but this is just to give you a rough overview of the UI and how to get around, not really about each individual feature. We're gonna have videos on each individual feature, so don't worry about that. 
So the next place we have is issues. These are like user stories. And then also inside of here, we have milestones, which are um, sprints inside of GitLab. So your issues are user stories, milestones are sprints. You're gonna have a list view. So if this had uh, issues inside of it, we'd see one after another after another with descriptions and who's owned to it and what labels does that issue have and we would be able to filter them by what milestone are they in and uh, things like um, uh, if they have any labels uh, associated with them. We don't have any kind of that stuff in our project just yet so there's no way of actually filling that stuff out yet. You're going to also get a Kanbana board for your issues. So you're going to be able to um, uh, organize them inside of a Kanbana board uh, kind of environment. Then we move on to milestones. Milestones are just um, uh, sprints, like I said. You could take your issues and put them all into one milestone. And that way you could track how much work is being done inside of a milestone. You could have multiple people working inside of a milestone and then issue out work to each individual person uh, throughout the week. And then as that work gets done, uh, people can you know, move them into the close status and you can see a progress bar fill up uh, as issues go from the open status to the close status and until eventually your milestone is done. You'll also get a nice little burn up and burn down chart on your milestone to just kind of visualize um, how the work is being done and also track all the work that's being done. I'm going to skip over iterations uh, for now and just move on to merge requests. Merge requests are um, when you're taking code from one branch and merging it into another branch. Uh, and you're going to see all the open merge requests here. And uh, merge requests are a good way of doing code review and approval. Uh, before things get pushed into maybe your mainline branch or uh, whatever you have as your trunk branch. Uh, so it's a good place to know, okay, I have stuff that are issues. We created merge requests out of those issues. And now that we have these merge requests, here's all the work that went into them. And do I approve or do I disapprove of this work? And then when you accept the merge request, it'll go into the close state and it won't show up in this menu anymore. Well, it will, um, there'll be a tab for closed, but this little badge icon here will only, is only updated for open issues. We have security and compliance and audit events. These are just things for um, maintainers and owners of groups. Uh, as a way to kind of just see things that are being changed that maybe you want to be flagged about. Um, if somebody changes a variable inside of a GitLab project, not the actual code, but um, in settings you'll have variables for your GitLab project that can be used for commits and when you push code in and push code out, these variables can be read to do different things. If settings inside of your projects are changed, They'll show up here in the audit events if they're set up to trigger an audit um, uh, audit event, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that word didn't really come to me. But we'll move on uh, very awkwardly here. We have push rules. Push rules are just uh, how you kind of want to handle when somebody pushes code to a repository. Um, you could set up different rules, uh, regular expressions, make sure that somebody's email follows a certain pattern, things like that, just to make sure that the code that you're receiving is the code that you really want. We'll move on to Kubernetes. Kubernetes GitLab has integration with Kubernetes clusters, I believe um, with AWS and even Google Cloud, and then you could integrate your own Kubernetes cluster uh, if you have all the settings and control for it. Um, these are really good features for when you want to do automatic deployment of your application. Um, the GitLab pipeline will handle pretty much everything. 
once you submit your code, you can build Docker images and then deploy them off to your Kubernetes cluster, and then they'll make pods and do all the cool stuff that Kubernetes does. Um, we'll cover this in another video. Package re re excuse me, I, my brain died there. Package registries are just uh, ways that you could host your code in a package and then you can download those packages on to your local machine. So if you have a software package, you could use GitLab as a package registry and they'll download the code from there. Sorry about that. I didn't notice it was three o'clock and my Roomba decided to start cleaning the room. So we're talking about container registry. So if you have a Docker image that you wanna host and you don't wanna use Docker Hub or something more public, you could use GitLab's container registry to host these uh, locally on your GitLab instance. Um, if you have something like AWS that you're using as a Kubernetes cluster or to host your Docker images, it kind of might make more sense to use um, AWS as a container registry since your data could be hosted inside the same data center but GitLab also provides a really easy way of doing things. So, and you know, the internet isn't that slow nowadays, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, I'm gonna skip over dependencies um, and I'm just gonna move over into analytics. So analytics just gives you value streams and data about your entire um, project or group or whatever you are looking at at the time and it's pretty good for just figuring out you know how work is being done and who's doing work you know you have uh, contributions for each group member so if there was more people contributing code on this group you'd see uh, more names down here and then you could have bar graphs for each person kind of showing off the kind of work that they're doing you could have more analytics on issues. I don't have any issues open at the time, so there's no data on that. Uh, productivity, this group is pretty new, so there's not a lot of data for GitLab to parse here. Moving on, we could look at the wiki. So if you wanna create a wiki page for your GitLab projects, GitLab groups, you can totally do that. And I think everything's written using Markdown. So it's all written in a way that is pretty easy to do, um, create documentation and then also um, edit and share that documentation. Uh, I kind of like to use GitLab's pages more than the wiki and host my own documentation, something like Docusaurus or another single page uh, site generator, um, static site generator for creating my documentation. but. Uh, you have this feature available to you if you want to use it. And then you have general settings, um, uh, two-factor authentication stuff, things for badges, uh, code badges, and things like that. Um, custom project templates, we'll go over that in another video for sure. Uh, templates, we'll go over that in another video for sure. You have advanced, which you know lets you export these groups or change the URL or remove the group. Uh, I'm going to skip over integrations. I'm going to skip over projects. Uh, we can kind of look at repositories. You could have deploy tokens uh, to create API tokens uh, for things that you know aren't a human doing something. Maybe you have uh, a system uh, doing stuff with the API or you, you want to use GitLab's API. You can create deploy tokens to do that and give them read, write, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you have you can rename what kind of name the default initial branch for most things they'll be in the main branch um, continuous integration and continuous delivery uh, you can create variables uh, I'm gonna kind of gloss over this kind of stuff it's not super important uh, it'll be very important in future videos but I just don't want to you know fill this video up with uh, a bunch of content that you're gonna forget without examples. I'll skip applications and packages, uh, pretty much everything else uh, uh, I could skip and you wouldn't be missing too much. And then just moving everything back, the main screen here that you're gonna interact with um, 
you'll have the name of the group that you're in or maybe the project, uh, a group ID, um, some statistics about the group, and then you'll have the actual group here. Um, you'll see that I have templates as a sub-project. And then inside of that sub-project, I have different uh, repositories. So this is where I actually host code. And I can take a look at this one, like the C++ base. And inside of it, I just have some basic stuff like a main program. And if I click here, it'll give me my code. And I can go back. I have a readme, which is basically just this information right here. You can see that this is the readme. And um, inside of a project, we have some more information like the commit, how many branches I have open, are there any tags, how big every, everything is, um, a way of cloning my code. All this stuff is available to you. So we're going to go over all that stuff in future videos, so don't worry about it. For now, just know that it exists and um, that these are things. All right, uh, I think that does it for this video. So oop, if you guys have any questions at all about the content that I kind of went over in this video, just leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to reply to it. Um, you know, if you like this video and you want to see more of it, hit the like button. That'll let me know. That'll let the algorithm know that that's what you want. And, um, you know, if you don't want to miss our future videos, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's free for you and it helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching and have a great day, guys.